Good evening and welcome to day two of QUT's special G20 News Editions. On the eve of the Global Summit, many leaders, their delegations and thousands of international media are settling into Brisbane. Also gathering steam are the G20 protests, with the biggest kicking off in Roma Street. And it looks like the summit might be over for some police who've been struck down with a gastrovirus. The special G20 terminal at the International Airport was kept busy throughout the day, with 13 of the leaders arriving. Motorcades like this one will be a familiar sight in Brisbane streets across the weekend. Queensland Police will be posting regularly updated details about road closures on their website. Meanwhile, text messages have been sent out to all 6,000 police patrolling the host G20 city, warning of a risk of a vomiting bug after 15 officers became ill. And as Russian warships continue exercises off Australia, a third Australian naval vessel has been sent to monitor them. The exercises in the Coral Sea are being seen as a show of force by President Vladimir Putin. He'll be one of the last leaders to arrive in Brisbane for the summit. The King of Saudi Arabia kicked off a wave of G20 arrivals, touching down late last night. Following him early this morning, Turkish President Erdogan. Premier Campbell Newman and his wife Lisa were at a special G20 terminal to welcome South Korea's president. Mexico's Enrique Peña Nieto was next to arrive, with more leaders following throughout the day. At G20 headquarters at South Bank, ministers welcomed international guests. Can I extend a very special acknowledgement and welcome to those that have travelled from beyond our Queensland borders to be here for G20 as well. Before his G20 commitments, British Prime Minister David Cameron was in Canberra with our PM, Tony Abbott. I was going to start the day with a, with a run with Tony Abbott, but I thought he might go a bit fast. And then, <laughs> then he talked about a bicycle ride, but I thought that that might involve uh, wearing more lycra than is um, consistent with seeking re-election. Mr Cameron flew to Brisbane this afternoon aboard an RAAF flight with our Prime Minister. The remaining leaders, including the US and Russian presidents, are expected tomorrow morning. And late this afternoon, QT became the focus of one prominent G20 delegate, the Indian Prime Minister. Narendra Modi came to our Gardens Point campus to see what we had to offer, including one of the world's largest interactive learning and display spaces. The Cube is a two-storey, high digital centrepiece of the Science and Engineering Centre. Mr Modi believes technology is pivotal to the economic future of India. The Prime Minister also met with the university's research team, which spearheaded a multi-million dollar partnership with the Indian government. Using exclusive QUT technology, the team's developing iron-rich bananas, drought-resistant chickpeas and other pulses, all staple foods in India and university researchers pitched a new project to the Indian PM. Our approach in this project is to really try and accelerate the, the process of, of commercialisation of the... 680 Indian students are currently at QUT's three campuses. The overseas education sector is a growing market. Already it's worth many millions of dollars to Australian universities. So this visit could well mean good business for QUT. But Whitney, not everybody's so happy about the G20. That's true, Celeste. And as the number of world leaders here swells, a torrent of protesters have taken to the street with their own G20 agenda. Today, people rallied against Aboriginal deaths in custody. Tempers did flare, with police watching on. Up to 500 people marched through the streets of the CBD, with protesters upset at what they say is a lack of justice after Aboriginal deaths in police custody. This to us is a terroristic bloody act. We need to stop this, not us, but they need to because it's under their system. The march began at Roma Street Parklands and made its way to Musgrave Park, just a stone's throw from where the world's most powerful leaders will meet over the weekend. The rally is one of many planned to coincide with the G20, but police say they shouldn't interfere with the summit itself. There is no credible intelligence to indicate that these protests will be violent. However, 
Should a protest become violent or destructive, the Queensland Police Service will take swift and immediate action. For now, the police themselves are being policed. Independent legal observers are stationed at protest events, ensuring things don't get too out of hand. Their role is to really stay independent and watch and record the interactions between police and members of the public. If today's rally is a precursor of what's to come in the next few days, they might have a tough job on their hands. We say no! With the eyes of the world on Brisbane at the moment, these people know there'll never be a better time to have their voices heard. And they're not the only ones with a different G20 agenda. At South Bank, protesters were decked out as lifeguards with oversized fiberglass heads. Barack Obama gave a thumbs up, alongside his British counterpart David Cameron and our very own Tony Abbott. The protest was organised by Oxfam to draw attention to what it calls the rising tide of global inequality. With smiles all round, G20 organisers can only hope future protests are as light-hearted. Joseph Cooney, QUT News. Still to come on our G20 News, we take you inside the exclusion zone and show you how G20 goes to the world.